it is 10 to 5 on budget day. Tax was certainly not the main show in town today. It was more on the spend side. But as ever with tax, plenty to talk about. And here are my main um, insights. Um, we'll kick off with individuals because it applies to everyone. Not much on the income tax side. No change to rates or bans. Um, small change for USC for minimum wage workers, increase in the dependent relative credit and the main change has been the levelling um, of the credits for employed and self-employed employ self -employed extra €150 Euro credit a year. We still have that differential, the 3% differential between self-employed and salaried individuals. Um, but I suppose that can be balanced by the fact that there was no change in employ in the rate of PRSI that the self-employed um, pay, which had been mooted um, to change um, before budget. On capital gains tax, um, disappointingly no change on the headline 33% rate, um, a small change to the operation of the entrepreneur relief rate, um, a little enhancement of it. Um, tax advisors will have a list of about 10 enhancements to this particular regime. I suppose we'll always welcome, we'll, we'll always welcome one. Working from home, um, nothing introduced today. Um, that's, it's, it's, it's been noted this is subject, the working from home credit, um, it's subject to an interdepartmental inter study, which is fair enough. It's a complex and kind of nuanced area. And at the moment, the rules really do reflect a kind of a two-tier pandemic society. If you're, you get, there's no, um, you get full relief um, if your employer pays your equipment, utilities, whereas those employees who are bearing those costs themselves, it's a, it's a lot more difficult to get, um, to get relief. And I suppose even evidenced by the fact that the minister um, confirmed that revenue um, uh, allow or include broadband costs as the same as uh, height, uh, light, uh, sorry, utilities, um, which one would have thought would have been a default in any case. Um, so watch this space here and hopefully um, the changes will be effective, any changes will be effective from 1 January. Um, nothing further on um, things like re tax residency or the various reliefs, people who are impacted by um, being in Ireland or abroad. Um, abroad this year. Again, one would hope that maybe in the finance bill or there may be more detailed commentary on these areas as they impact a lot of people. Um, on the COVID, uh, the COVID supports, I suppose the main one that's got the headlines even this morning and indeed today, and not a lot more detail on it, is this um, the COVID restriction support scheme, CRESS. Um, so imply, it applies to businesses um, who are operating or impacted by level three and above, whose turnover has been decimated compared to 20, 2019 levels, uh, reduced by 80% or more. Maximum refund is, uh, cash refund is five grand. Um, and it's supposed to operate from this evening onwards with the first refunds towards the midway through um, next month. So you'd hope in the next couple of hours or day, we'll have more detail. It kind of looks like it's some form of a, um, a credit against future tax. And I suppose if you cash flow now, then hopefully you'll be in a position that you'll be able to pay tax in the, in the future, but await more details on that. Um, the other ones are welcome to businesses. The extension of the EWSS scheme are a variant of it up towards the end of next year. No cliff edge, as the minister said. Um, tax warehousing, really, um, really welcome this one. Income tax um, for 2019 and 2020 can be, can be included in this low or 0% interest regime, 0% for a year and then 3% thereafter. Really beneficial compared to the um, the really high, the high default rates of interest that we have in our books of eight and 10%. Um, to apply for that scheme, you needed to make an application by the end of this month. Um, no word yet on whether that deadline is extended, but one would hope so. Um, and the other main headline today is the, the decrease in the VAT rate for the hospitality sector back down to 9%. Um, from 1st of November um, all the way out towards the end of uh, the end of next year. Um, the other areas that probably haven't got the same attention, but probably sometimes a little bit more interesting. I'll just go through them. Uh, go through them in brief. Um, help to buy extended um, extended for uh, the, the extended further. 
Stamp duty, um, some people will be, wel uh, will, be um, will welcome that there's been no change to the rate for large houses. That's still a 2% rate, um, sorry, large or valuable houses, 2% rate. Um, there's been, there's various reliefs, stamp duty reliefs for transfer of farms that were due to expire. Those reliefs have been extended and there's a stamp duty refund scheme for residential development property and that's been kind of that's been amended um, to make it a little bit more workable um, which would be welcome um, a nice one accelerated uh, capital allowances which is an investment where you invest in energy efficient equipment you get a full allowance in year one rather than spreading it over eight years um, that relief that scheme has been ex extended um, and one point to note on that scheme is that it applies both to companies and individuals so individuals in particular paying such higher rates um, it can be a real real cash flow advantage um, to individuals especially investing in, in capital equipment the r d tax credit i suppose this was disappointing today there was no real mention of it from the minister and um, there could have been some easy wins for smes and and cash flow which didn't go with and I suppose just on that point last year there was enhancements to the regime made um, announced for SMEs subject to EU state aid approval which is absolutely fair enough but no word since a year later on um, the state aid approval so would have thought there would have been mention of it today so my hope is that um, there will be mention or maybe get it over the line in the next two in the next two two weeks for the finance bill there was mention of the knowledge development box, which is claimed was claimed by thirteen uh, claimants uh, two years, three years ago. Um, this has been extended another two years, and I suppose I know myself there must be um, clients, in particular SMEs, who are claiming the R and D credit, who should be eligible for the knowledge development box. And it's just a point, just talking about it, looking at it, and um, asking your advisor about it, because um, thir the, the, the thirteen claimants just does not seem right. Um, multinationals, just a small little tweak for um, intangible assets, which also applies across the board, um, mainly impacts um, multinationals just for assets acquired from today onwards. So um, uh, kind of no cost neutral basis uh, to align with best practice uh, internationally. Um, just on the multinational point, I suppose that's all going to kick off next year at an international level, just to figure out the whole digital tax regime. Um, um, and watch this space because there will be a lot of attention on it um, and it's really important for Ireland clearly. Um, the other point, a very interesting point, the Minister um, um, in his speech um, said he was introducing a anti-avoidance provision to address any of an avoidance issue which has been brought to my attention and um, I looked at the, uh, the financial measures, the actual measure and it's actually really, I, I really welcome this measure I think a lot of other, uh, even a lot of other tax advisors would. It's um, where um, if you have foreign currency, US dollar in a bank account and you switch, you just even move within that bank um, uh, to a different bank, uh, to um, just a different account, then that can trigger technically a capital gains tax event, which can give rise to either a gain or a loss. So this provision today says that not the gain and loss will be disregarded essentially for tax purposes and uh, you'd imagine the anti-avoidance element is to create artificially or sorry to remove the artificial losses um, and contrivances but I've known enough down the years the amount of taxpayers or clients that have potentially got caught um, by this provision um, and it's a real bug buyer bear generally so um, so would would um, would certainly welcome it and it actually makes compliance a little bit more easier for um, for advisors um, finally just to just to wrap up just on climate change and I suppose it's now the new old reliable as someone said earlier on in the week um, um, as anticipated the increase in carbon taxes and you'll note also in the, in the various headlines and commentary the changes to um, the motor tax and VRT regime. Just from my own personal perspective, this is my opportunity to say, this is my witness statement for the David Attenborough. I just watched that David Attenborough documentary on, uh, um, on Netflix. It's only about 80 minutes and well worth your time. 
Um, and I'll just finish off with, there was again, sorry, one other point, no real mention of um, Brexit and supports and the VAT regime around that. And to be honest, now thinking back on it, I'd actually, I think that's a good idea in that it probably would have got lost in the detail today and maybe save it for another day and have a few and have a blitz of it. Um, companies and businesses do need to prepare and start preparing now. And it's really difficult because um, certainly we, um, the, 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 you know, it's, it's probably be down to the last minute knowing the exact nuances, but certainly you can get the procedures in place and processes in place now and plan for it. Um, I'll leave it at that. I suppose nothing's ever perfect, but given today that we had the budget was in the context of both the no-deal Brexit and also um, the assumption that we'll have no vaccine, um, then certainly to have no tax increases and, um, and certainly positive impacts for businesses on the, on the tax side is, is welcome. And um, look forward to the more information on the Crest scheme and hopefully more clarifications on the various things I've said, I've mentioned, and which hopefully will happen in the next couple of days and then the finance bill process, which, hope, which should hopefully have a bit more meat um, on the various other aspects, in particular on the admin side. Um, I'll leave it at that. Uh, thank you very much for listening and, uh, um, and be in touch soon.